Welcome to episode 24 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our founder and CEO, David Stocken, answers the question, what are ground loops? So David will jump through some hoops to explain these loops. It's all yours, David. Well, that's a good question. What are ground loops? And uh, to be clear, we're not talking about the electrode system called a ground ring or counterpoise. Uh, what we're talking about is the uh, the old timer electrician who says, "Be careful! You're going to cause a ground loop if you're not, you know, careful there." So uh, I hear this all the time. Well, I'm concerned I might cause a, a ground loop. I didn't want to put that connection because it cause a ground loop. We hear this a lot, and I'm not sure I understand what that means, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, the general thing, what I think it started out as in, it was the uh, the connect, an accidental connection on from the source transformer between the main panel and the source transformer when they did not bring over a ground wire. They only brought bring over a neutral and hot wires. You can imagine, for example, uh, a continuous concrete pad with a pad-mounted transformer and then a building on it, and they're sharing a common uh, piece of steel rebar between them. And they only bring over the hot and the neutral, and they're placing a neutral to ground bond inside the main panel. And then they install the ground rod, and it touches the steel rebar. And then the ground rod in the transformer goes through and touches the steel rebar. Now what's happened is there's an opportunity because we have a neutral ground bond in our panel and an accidental connection, an unintentional connection between the uh, ground rods at both sides. Normal operating neutral currents. This means the neutral currents that are going, you know, we send 10 amps down our branch circuit we have 10 amps coming back as it hits that neutral ground bond in the panel. Instead of all 10 amps going back through the neutral wire to the transformer, part of it now can go down the ground rod, hit the steel rebar, go across the steel rebar, up the other ground rod at the transformer and back, and it will, right? Electricity does not take the path of least resistance. Sorry to break it to you. It takes every conceivable path it possibly can, just in equal proportion to the resistance it's saying, right? So if you provide that extra path, another metallic path back, um, it will take it. And now you have neutral currents traveling back on your normally non-current carrying grounded system that people can touch, and that's dangerous. If you recall, and it, I believe it's in 250.28, uh, there, there's a discussion in the NEC about how to handle multiple structures being fed from a common feeder source, right, from a common circuit breaker box. And in certain cases, if you have, you have to prove that there's no content, no metallic connection between the two structures. And in other cases, there is a connection between the metallic structures. And this is exactly what we're talking about. If you went up to that transform, that source transform, you took your ohm meter and you put an ohm meter on, you took it over to your panel and it's high, well, that means there's probably no, you know, nearly an open, there's probably no metallic connection between the two. But if it's low, it might be because, you know, the ground rods touch the steel rebar or there's some other connection happening. Maybe there's a below grade ground system. Someone put a loop around the transformer and a loop around your building and tied them together. In that case, the neutral ground bond in your panel must be removed, right? We see this in 250.6 and in, and in at least 12 other places within the code. Uh, do we see the requirement to remove those to prevent what's called objectionable currents? 
Objectionable currents, again, are neutral currents returning back to the transformer on the grounding system, and that's a big no-no. It's very hazardous. It's very dangerous. We want to prevent that. So this is what my understanding of a ground loop is. It's an unintentional connection allowing neutral currents to travel back. It is not because you added an extra connection or added another ground rod. These don't cause loops at all. In fact, we, you know, when it comes to a ground loop and the, and the idea of a ring around a building, we actually like those. Um, they're one of the, the most effective electrode system we know of is a ground ring, right? Circumnavigating your building and bonding it up to the building steel and up into your system. These are the single best methods that you can a me a electrode system you can have for safety and for effective grounding, reduction of electromagnetic interference, lower resistance to ground, every factor a ground ring is ideal. Uh, but that's not what most times when you hear the old timer talk about a ground loop is talking about. They're talking about causing a uh, new, normal operating neutral currents travel back on the ground system in violation of NEC 250.6. Uh, the other place this happens oftentimes is when you put in an automatic transfer switch. You have three pole, four pole transfer switches in one case. Uh, the four pole, right, you need a neutral ground bond in the generator, but in a three pole, you do not. Uh, they get that mixed up, and now all of a sudden you have, again, you're allowing neutral currents to travel back on the ground system. Uh, when you're designing your circuits, always remember you have to check the normal operating condition to make sure that it's make sure that 100% of the neutral currents stay on the neutral wire, and then put a fault in the system and see what happens when a fault occurs and trace it out. And then a fault condition should go onto the ground system to get back grounding system to get back to the transformer. But in all cases the fault current has to get back to the transformer. Remember, uh, all faults clear through the source transformer no matter where that transformer is located. If you have a metallic path back to it, it'll stay on the ground system. If you don't, it'll travel through the earth to get back there. At the level of the NEC, you're not allowed to use the earth as a conductor. Only at the level of utility companies are they allowed to use that. So what are ground loops? Ground loops in the old timer sense are uh, accidental connections that allow neutral currents to travel back, normal operating neutral currents to travel back on the ground system. That's a violation of NEC 250.6. It's very dangerous. You don't want it. And you can check it real quickly. Grab your amp meter and check your ground wires. Get an IR camera, put them on your ground wire, see if you have any current flowing on them. You should have very, very low current well less than half an amp, most cases well below 100 milli, uh, milliamps easily. Uh, and you can tell if you have that. If you do, you should do, if you have greater than that, you should do a check and quickly find out why you have currents coming back on your ground system because they should not be coming back on your ground system during normal operating conditions. Only during fault conditions should your ground system be utilized uh, as a fault current path. Okay, uh, I think that'll wrap us up for today. A nice short one. Um, if you're listening on our podcast, you know, please hit subscribe and leave us a review. If you're watching uh, us on YouTube, hit that like button, leave us a comment. Uh, lots of information down below, links and links and links of stuff to good information. Please check out our website. Tons of good material in there. Leave us a comment, give us a call, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you'd like to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. See you next time.